So far, all animations that we've created have been declarative, meaning that we only specified the desired values for animatable properties, and then Frame of Motion decided when to start and stop the animation, usually depending on the change of the component state. With imperative approach, we have full control over animations, and we can start and stop them whenever we want. To see how we can trigger animation imperatively, let's go back to carousel component and animate format labels when they change. We want the label to jump from the bottom, and we're going to use its Y property for that. One thing that I want to point out here is that we'll need to use a div element instead of a span. Span is an inline element, and transform property that we would have to use to animate Y position cannot be used on inline elements. This is not related to frame of motion, but rather is part of CSS specification. So we still need to keep it in mind. So let's start by replacing span with the div and add in motion prefix as usual. Then I'll add initial property with y equal 30 and animate it to y equals zero. If we save the changes and run it now, we won't see any animation. The reason for that is that once our motion div is mounted, only its children change, but the component itself doesn't. We've already seen this behavior with the carousel items, and we had to add a key property so that React would know it has to re-render the component when that key changes. We can set key property to index and confirm that it fixes the problem. But instead, let's use an imperative animation here. With imperative animations, we can start, stop, and reset them whenever we want. To create an imperative animation, Let's import use animation hook from frame of motion, create a new variable called controls, and set it to the return value of use animation function. Next, we need to link this controls object to a motion element that it will control. To do that, let's scroll down to our motion label, remove key and initial properties, and set animate property to controls. To make the label jump from the bottom every time we change the index, we want to move it 30 pixels down and then animate it to its original position. Our controls object has a few handy functions that can be used exactly for that. So let's see how we can use them. Inside paginate method, we'll call controls.set function and set y to 30, and then call star function and set y to zero. Now both set and star functions let us change the values of the controlled motion element. The difference is that set function will set the new value immediately, whereas star function will animate to it. So when we change the page, we'll hide the label without animation by setting its Y property to 30 and then animate it back to zero. Let's save the changes and confirm that it works as expected. Perfect. One thing to note here is that star function returns a promise that resolves when animation completes. So unless it is the last statement in the block, we need to await it. For example, if we wanted to use animation when we hide label, we'd have to change set function to start. Now we have two promises, and to make sure that the second one doesn't start executing until the first one is finished, we need to make the entire method async and then await our promises. Let's save the changes and see how it works. In our application, we've animated only one property, but use animation hook lets us animate as many properties as we want. In essence, anything that we can pass directly to animate property, we can pass to star function as well, including transition property inside animation definitions or even variant labels. To change the default transition that is used for controls object, we can call set default transition method and pass it our custom transition. Let's make our transition less jumpy by setting its type to twin with the default easing and duration. 